Any anticipation at the halt in the bombing of North Vietnam would bring a corresponding decrease in the level of fighting in the South has been dispelled. And there is every reason to expect that even when the South Vietnamese join the peace talks in Paris, the fighting will not taper off significantly. Over the weekend and the heaviest engagements in three months, Allied troops killed more than 400 of the enemy in battles between Da Nang and Quang Tri City. Allied losses were described as light. No Americans, 12 South Vietnamese, and seven South Koreans died. American aircraft destroyed another North Vietnamese bunker complex in the southern half of the demilitarized zone. And Lieutenant General Hong Zuan Lam, who commands South Vietnamese forces in the five northern provinces, reported today that entire enemy companies have been seen moving into that half of the zone. Still, it's believed that the South Vietnamese soon will end their boycott of the Paris talks. David? The Paris meeting on Vietnam, usually held on Wednesdays, probably will not be held on this Wednesday. The South Vietnamese still have not agreed to come to the meeting, and the U.S. still has not decided to go ahead without them. And the U.S. still believes it will be worked out, possibly by Wednesday of next week. But it is complicated trying to find an arrangement agreeable to four fiercely political entities, North Vietnam, the Viet Cong, South Vietnam, and the United States. Here's some background in more detail from contributing editor John Chancellor. As of today, the United States was still working on the South Vietnamese to get them to send a delegation to the talks in Paris. Reports from Saigon indicate that uh, South Vietnam may be about ready to do this, but some things have yet to be worked out. The South Vietnamese say the war is being fought in their country, so they should head the delegation. The United States is opposed to this, and American diplomats are trying to set up a combined delegation in which the two allies have a functional and pragmatic relationship, as one official put it today. That means the South Vietnamese have the dominant voice in matters of concern to them, as the Americans would have in areas of primary concern to the United States. This would amount to a sort of combined leadership under which both groups would have some say in both political and military matters. The North Vietnamese, meanwhile, are still pushing the idea of separate status for the Communist National Liberation Front, and this has caused all kinds of jitters in Saigon. That's the main reason for the delay. Today, the North Vietnamese became a little more troublesome when their chief Paris negotiator said there would have to be acknowledgement of the status of the National Liberation Front or no talks. American officials now believe North Vietnam will stick to this line. And despite their overall hopes for success, that won't make it any easier to get South Vietnam to Paris. The Huntley Brinkley Report is produced by NBC News and brought to you in color by Mogan David's Fine Dry Wines, Sweet Wines, and Champagnes. Dinner time, TV time, cocktail time. Any time is fun time with Mogan David. Mogan David makes an excellent table wine. Kitchen table. Delicious Concord grape taste. Dining table. Makes a fine dinner better. End table. Wonderful on the rocks. Card table. Night table. It's the star on any table. Mogan David Concord. Blackberry, cherry, rosé, and cream sauterne wines. Enjoy them often. Adam Clayton Powell was having some work done in a dentist chair today when he got the news the Supreme Court had agreed to hear his case, had agreed to decide if Congress had the power to keep him out of his seat. Congress generally feels it is totally sovereign in these matters and that the courts have no right to ask any questions or give any opinions. But when they denied a Powell, Powell a seat because he was charged with mishandling money and gross misconduct, he went to court. And today, after a long delay, the court agreed to hear his case. It could lead to a clash between two branches of government, each of which is, to some extent, the last word. Anyway, the court will look at the Powell case, and Powell called a press conference in New York to say he was pleased. I personally want to say that I personally am extremely gratified that, regardless of what the outcome is, at least uh, we are now uh, living again under a republic that has three branches of government. Um, I think that's monumental in American history. And uh, of course we wait anxiously and 
hopefully, at the decision, will restore to me my seniority. Uh, how long uh, it will take, I do not know. This constable knows about the timetable of the Supreme Court, and it will have to come in this part, I guess. And um, so uh, that's all I have to say. If the court says one thing and the House of Representatives says another, there is no higher authority to settle it, and so nobody knows what will happen. Chet? Schools in eight Ohio districts may shut down after Thanksgiving for the rest of the semester. The shutdowns will be the result of voter disapproval of school budgets. New York City's 10-week school strike ended today when a teacher's approved a settlement. The strike started when a community school board in a Brooklyn ghetto refused to reinstate a group of white teachers it had transferred. The teachers' union demanded the removal of the community board and an end to the decentralization experiment in the district. But it settled for less. NBC News correspondent Lem Tucker reports. Teachers lined up despite today's rain to vote on the compromise agreement to end the city's 10-week-old public school crisis. Others had voted last night. More than 20,000 teachers voted. That's more than usually take part in union business. But the long strike had increased tensions and resulted in the loss of 10 weeks pay. So today they were willing to stand in line to vote their opinions. The agreement calls for the state to take over the local district. A special state-appointed three-man board will protect teachers' rights. Local officials will be suspended until they promise to obey the terms of the agreement. Some of the teachers were unhappy with the contract, but they said they thought they had got as much as they could. Everyone was tired, and they were ready to go back to work. Even before the ballots were counted, the outcome was predictable. There were 20,408 votes cast. That's between last night and today. The polls today closed at 12 noon. 17,658 teachers voted to accept the agreement and go back to work. 2,738 voted to reject the agreement and stay out. Almost immediately, many teachers returned to their schools. For the most part, it was symbolic because students will not attend classes until tomorrow. Although job security was the main issue when the strike started, racial tensions had complicated the crisis. This strike opened up a lot of talk and feelings along racial lines. Do you think it's going to be more difficult for you to function now in the community because of that talk? Well, what it might have done is simply to uh, open up possible sore that, that existed already. Maybe just as well they came out into the open and we can possibly deal with it even better now that they are out in the open, more directly, more honestly, and uh, more objectively, I hope. Is it going to be more difficult now that uh, the racism is out in the open? No, I, I think now that it is, it, uh, it is out in the open, both sides realize it is, and maybe you can deal from this, poss from this basis at this point now. Uh, we can be possibly be more honest on both sides and deal, for, deal with this matter on this basis. The black and Puerto Rican community where the crisis began still has not accepted this agreement. Just before it was announced yesterday, one of the local community officials said city and union leaders were plotting the beginning of the end of the experimental project. Unless the local community is willing to accept what others have agreed to, New York City may only be enjoying a brief rest before its school crisis continues. Lem Tucker, NBC News, New York. Baby's upset tummy and yours have a lot in common. It's a well-known medical fact that eating too much or too fast can cause pressure and gas. Here's the best solution for baby. For you, Digel, the extra action antacid. Digel not only neutralizes excess acid, it has the extra action of cymethicone that breaks up bubbles of gas. Helps you feel better fast. When you eat too well, demand Digel. Watch. There's going to be an accident. Ouch! When you get a kitchen burn, spray away pain with Solar Cane. Solar Cane stops skin pain faster, more effectively than ordinary first aids that contain no pain-killing ingredients. Solar Cane. Spray, lotion, or cream all contain benzocaine, medication used by doctors. Stop skin pain with Solar Cane. For minor burns, cuts, and scrapes, 
Solar Cane. French Premier Coup de Merville today told his countrymen that all the help France will need to prevent the collapse of the franc doubtless will be forthcoming from its European partners. It was reported that West Germany had offered half a billion dollars, but that it was turned down. The French feared the mark would be revalued upward, making repayment that much more costly. In Los Angeles, Bernard Weinsider, a bread salesman, is having trouble disposing of an oil well. Here is a report from NBC News correspondent Jack Perkins. There is a myth about oil wells, a myth that was born, no doubt, in Texas and is perpetuated by the Beverly Hillbillies. The moral seems to be, you too might wake up in the morning and find an oil well in your backyard, if you're lucky. Well, it happened to Mr. Bernard Weinsider in West Los Angeles, and we thought you should see what happened to him. Two months ago, oil began bubbling up through his patio. Well, to find out what was happening, he had to dig up the patio. He found that an old oil well, abandoned 43 years ago, had come unplugged and was leaking up again, which may sound good, but it wasn't. No oil company was interested. The Winesiders don't own mineral rights anyhow, so they have to pay $2 a barrel to have the oil hauled away. They spent $3,000 by now. Insurance does not cover it. It's a fire hazard. Their tenant has moved out from the smell. Neighbors are suing them. And the Getty Oil Company, which once owned the well, says it isn't responsible. And so far, the Getty Oil Company, they don't want to take no interest in it. It belongs to them. They abandoned it in 1925, and they had the money. We have the trouble. Mr. Weinsider, I know you were saying before that, that this money means more to you than it does to J. Paul Getty. That's right. Yeah. Definitely. To him, to him, to me, a penny is, is more or less to him a million because he, I'm, I'm working, I'm working very hard, I'm getting up five o'clock, I'm struggling, I'm working to make a living, and I have to have this kind of money. Bernard Weinsider found an oil well in his backyard, and it might break him. Jack Perkins, NBC News, Los Angeles. Ever wonder why you feel so tired? Well, this could be the answer. Iron poor blood cells like these. If that's so, take Geritol to build more blood cells. Better shape, rich in iron like these. Now, the great majority of tired people don't feel that way because of iron poor blood and Geritol won't help them. But millions do have iron poor blood and you could be one of the many who are tired for that very reason and need Geritol. Just two Geritol tablets give you twice the iron and a pound of calf's liver. Geritol iron enters your bloodstream fast, carrying strength throughout your whole body. For iron poor blood, take Geritol and feel stronger fast. If you're over 35 and suffer from irregularity, change from pills, oils, magnesium, or salts. Take Seratan. Just two teaspoons of gentle Seratan give you as much bulk regulator as you get in seven apples. Take them daily. Seratan gets you regular, keeps you regular. Get Seratan. The Huntley Brinkley Report continues. Brought to you by Tarryton 100s or King Size with the activated charcoal filter. The activated charcoal filter that smooths the taste of Tarryton's fine tobaccos. Honey, let me do it. If you could put Tarryton's charcoal filter on your cigarette, you'd have a better tasting cigarette. Of course, no. we can't guarantee it'd smoke as smooth as a Tarryton. Face it, if you want your cigarette to smoke as smooth as a Tarryton, it'll just have to be a Tarryton with the activated charcoal filter. That's why us Tarryton smokers would rather fight than switch. The Czechoslovakian Communist Party today announced policies which would eliminate most of the liberal reforms of party leader Alexander Dubček. The Central Committee also announced formation of an eight-man executive committee which apparently would cut Dubček's powers. In Budapest, representatives of 50 communist parties met to try to agree on a date for a summit meeting of world communist leaders. The Alliance for Progress was formed seven years ago to help end underdevelopment and to fight communism in Latin America. Here is a report from NBC News correspondent George Page on how the Alliance is working in Colombia. The beautiful Caribbean ports of Colombia are busy. 
United States ships filled with United States products arrive daily. Most Americans have the impression the Alliance for Progress is a giveaway program. It is far from that. Through the Alliance, the United States loans money to Latin American countries like Colombia. Colombia, in turn, loans most of the money to private investors and importers. With the stipulation, the money must be used to buy United States products and raw materials. Latin American critics of the Alliance say it aids the United States economy as much or more than the economies of the Latin countries. The Alliance also encourages U.S. investments in Latin America. This is an American plant in Bogota. The plant provides jobs for 2,100 Colombians. But even though U.S. companies often pay more than Latin American employers, the jobs are low paying. The average worker makes about $100 a month. In Colombia, the average per capita income per year is only $300. The profits from this plant go to the United States. This is what some Latin Americans call Yankee imperialism. Wealthy businessmen and importers are the first Latin Americans to benefit from lively United States trade and investment. By Latin American standards, the liberal government of Colombian President Hilaris Restrepo is very progressive. His government has increased the taxes on the rich. But Colombia has not begun to approach a fair distribution of the country's wealth. Here and throughout Latin America, 3% of the population owns more than 90% of the wealth. The theory behind the alliance is that the poor, who are the great majority, will benefit from a growing economy. But the benefits are slow in coming. Studies by the Rand Corporation show income distribution in Colombia actually has become more unequal since the alliance began seven years ago. Some Colombians call it the Alliance Against Progress. At the United States Embassy in Bogota, Ambassador Ray Carlson defends the Alliance and says congressional cuts in the program will set the clock back. We're dealing here with problems that will take decades and not a ten-year period in which this can be resolved. And uh, unless we can see our way fit, to maintaining the momentum of our developmental thrust, both economic and social, meaning in the field of education, we are going to find ourselves in, uh, in a serious, serious straits in, in Latin America. Uh, we will simply confirm what they've always believed, namely that we're their fair weather friends. And when things get tight in other sections of the world, this is the first place that we turn off the valve. And uh, this has political implications uh, far beyond the immediate economic effects of such a cut in resources. The alliance is more helpful for the United States than for Colombia. The manager Alfonso Martinez is a leading financial writer for a top Bogota newspaper. Latin America Surprisingly, he is also a revolutionary, not afraid to express his opinion. Violent revolution is necessary because the people believe if there is Peaceful revolution, the powerful rich will take over again. The present economic structure must be destroyed. Those things must be done right now. Uh, we cannot, cannot wait because every year more children die. The social and economic injustices get worse. Curiously, revolution is talked about freely in Colombia, and the diary of Cuban revolutionary Che Guevara is prominently displayed in Bogota bookstores. Communist graffiti is a common sight in the slums of Bogota, but for the moment, there is no well-organized revolutionary movement in Colombia. The one sure thing you can say about Latin America is that fundamental social and economic change is inevitable. The only question is whether that change will come peacefully or violently. 
the United States has the resources and the ability to promote peaceful revolution in Latin America. But so far, it's not doing it. George Page, NBC News, Bogota, Colombia. When a virus cold hits you, your world can't stop. To keep going, you take aspirin for headache, an antihistamine for runny nose, and a decongestant for stuffiness. But not all three of these medications are concentrated in Dristan tablets. So when you can't stop, Dristan helps keep you going. Honey, I don't know how you do it. And with a virus cold. Oh, I feel all right now. Do everything you can do for relief of virus cold miseries and take Dristan tablets. Leave your feeling of tension behind and step into a quiet world. Take Quiet World tablets. You can feel calmer, more relaxed. Quiet World is the new modern calmative. Each Quiet World tablet contains special calming and tension relieving ingredients to help you feel relaxed, more peaceful. After all, we didn't call it Quiet World for nothing. Alexandros Panagoulos, sentenced to death last night in Athens for attempting to kill Greek Premier Papadopoulos, refused today to ask for clemency. He probably will be shot tomorrow. Secretary of State Rusk conferred today in Madrid with Spanish Chief of State Franco on the deadlock in negotiations to keep American military bases in Spain. Russia announced that its unmanned Zond-6 spacecraft returned to Earth from a trip around the moon and made a soft landing somewhere in the Soviet Union. Walter Wanger died today in New York, apparently of a heart attack, at age 74. He produced films which boosted the careers of such people as Rudolph Valentino and Greta Garbo. Prices were mixed today in active trading on the New York Stock Exchange. The Dow Jones Industrial Average went down more than two points, but the value of an average share of common stock went up eight cents. David? Last night, somebody in the vast reaches of the NBC network didn't get the word as in the army. The result was that football fans by the thousands were roused to a cold fury and some probably haven't cooled down yet. At seven o'clock last night NBC was carrying the pro game between the New York Jets and the Oakland Raiders. There were 65 seconds of playing time left. At seven NBC had scheduled a two-hour special program for children, a dramatization of Heidi. It was decided Heidi should wait a couple of minutes until the game was over. But somehow that decision never reached those who were pushing the buttons. So the football game was cut off the air a minute before it ended, and Heidi was started. The football fans erupted. There were 10,000 phone calls of complaint to New York NBC alone. So many, the telephone switchboards blew out their fuses. NBC apologized for the error, but by then Oakland had scored two touchdowns in the last minute at beaten New York, the game was over. The fans who missed it could not be consoled. Well, here is the last minute as it would have been seen last night if somebody at NBC had got the word. Monica to Charlie Smith. Smith is hitting and he scores! has gone absolutely berserk. Twice the Raiders have looked beaten, and rookie Charlie Smith, who's put on quite a show, has just grabbed this one. And now Oakland has the lead, 35 to 32, with 42 seconds. But the Jets still have Namath coming back. That makes it 36 to 32. And now the Jets receive the last two times the Jets have had the ball, they marched right down for scores on Namus passing. Namus 17 for 35 today, 342 yards. LaMonica is uh, 20 for 32 and 251 yards. They squib this one to prevent a run back. Will Christie fumbling it around. 
He fumbles the ball. And Oakland has it for a touchdown. Oakland has scored two touchdowns in nine seconds. Oakland now is kicking off. After the penalty on the extra point, they're kicking off from the New York Jet 45. It just might be that I should will kick this ball over the goal line. I might put it into the seat. And he does. The bounce is out again. The Jets will never lose a more heartbreaking game than this. They had this one right in their hands with a minute five to go. They kept coming back and coming back. They scored with three seconds to go at the end of the half. They were behind, took the lead. Oakland went ahead. The Jets came back again to take the lead. Dave Farrelly's a quarterback now. Loser fumbles the ball. Ben Davidson has him, and Davidson bulldogs him down. Ben Davidson, number 83. one's about all over 15 seconds we'll have a quick sign off here we hope you enjoyed the game we'll be in san diego next sunday four o'clock eastern time with a jets against san diego this is kurt gowdy and a great job today by ld rogatis and that's it the final score oakland 43 new york 32 it got to be so bad that when people phoned NBC to complain and couldn't get through because the switchboard fuses were blown, they started calling the police and threatened to blow their fuses. Good night, Chet. Good night, Dave. Good night for NBC News.